And we are joined right now by UMD head women's soccer coach, Greg Kane. Coach, thanks very much for being here. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, been a tough start to the year for you and the team, uh, you know, through the first part of the year. It feels like a lot of that inexperience is showing through. You've got a lot of players who are, are kind of getting their first taste of collegiate soccer, and it's been a tough go, but your, uh, your analysis of, of how they've played the first part of this year. Well, though, um, you're right, though. They're all Bulldogs. They're, they're puppies. <laughs> <laughs> and we've showed that inexperience in some of our, of our games. Um, the good news is, is that the, the, um, the mistakes are isolated, correctable, um, but there is a, a price to pay. And right now, that's you know that's our course, so to speak. But uh, we have played well um, in some of our early games, actually. Uh, as of late, still playing well, showing progress. But there's another team on the field, and uh, they're doing what they want to do too. And you look at the the results that you've had. Optimistically, you take out that six 0 result to start the season against Central Missouri, who's a top team. T top 10 team in the country and a lot of your other games they might be losses but they're one goal or two goal losses so like you say isolated mistakes isolated incidents that hopefully you can correct headed into the second half you're right and uh, as you know in our sport um, low scoring um, low opportunities typically um, it's the team that has that maybe experienced player or that consistent player that can finish when given the opportunity our past three games we haven't had that quality in our game and you know, losing uh, or getting behind 1-0 is, is difficult, um, you know, when you have a young team and trying to get back in a game, you start to take risks, of course, and then that opens the game up a little bit for the opponent. So that's what we've uh, experienced the last couple you couple talk games. about uh, having a consistent player. Marine Stormont was definitely that. She's yeah. your program's all-time leading scorer, and, and yeah. that was the big question yeah. coming in: was how are you going to how are you going to replace her? And obviously, she's a tough player to replace with one player. You got to kind of do it as a whole. And, and Kaylee Biat has has kind of stepped into a more offensive role this year. She leads your team with three goals. What mm -hmm. allows her in that attacking third to to be a player? Maybe that's a target for you to to try and get that finishing touch. Um, we we change the way we play up front. Marine was a special player, uh, how we played up front. Structurally was suited to her. Um, now we're playing with three people up front in our attack. That suits uh, one of our players, Kaylee, in that she likes to face the opponent in that part of the field. She has the skills to, you know, break a player down and then maybe create something for herself or another player. Um, so she's been given the freedom and the responsibility to do that. Um, now we have to you know, get good collaboration with her, and she has to be more productive in it. You look up and down your roster, you and I were talking uh, before, is that it feels like there's more local players than, than there have been in, in the past few years, and that's just kind of a cyclical thing. It just happens kind of, but two of them, Haley Hoff and Emily Fleissner, have been getting a lot of time on the field for you. As a coach, especially with how much soccer is growing in this area, how important is it to keep those connections open uh, for the UMD program? Well, I think it's been our history from, from the first year to, uh, to this year, our 22nd year. Um, it's been a big part of our program to have good players, top players, join our program and be impactful. Both of those players, though only sophomores, um, on this team are some of the more experienced players. Haley um, had a start a couple weeks ago and did quite well. Um, she played in another game after that, and then she was injured. So she'll be coming back and hoping that she can um, reignite, you know, kind of where she left off. And then Emily has just been, uh, you know, very good in consuming a lot of minutes for a sophomore and last year as a freshman, consuming a lot of minutes in the center of our back line, um, building as a leader, building as a primary player in the back, um, and we're seeing the, the progress uh, game by game with her. This weekend, uh, you never want to say easy games or easier games, especially in your conference, but two teams, Sioux Falls and Southwest Minnesota State, that are, are right around you and where the standings are. So, you know, at this point in the season, these are as, as big as games can get to, with a chance to move up in those standings. You're absolutely right. Anytime you're playing teams relative to your position, um, at, especially at this juncture of the season, it's really a fork in the road, so to speak. And uh, um, these are teams that we have to get points against against if we intend to move forward. It doesn't matter where they're at, what their name is, what jersey <laughs> color it is for us right now. We need to play well and we need to try and uh, get points. Awesome. Thank you yeah. very much, Coach. Good luck this weekend. You're welcome. Thank Coach you. Greg Kane, his team on the road this weekend to face Southwest Minnesota State and Sioux Falls.